Hi, this is Glenda, and today I'm gonna show you how to make this snowman. Uh, I'm gonna use Sopto in white, in black, in teal for the scarf, but it could be any other color if you want the scarf a different color. Brown for the arms, and orange for the nose. As far as tools, I'm going to be using a blade, or you could use a knife. I'll be using this chopstick, but you could use a pen with a tip. I'll have a brush and water and then a working surface which in this case I'm using a tile. First thing will be to just soften all of the soap dough so that is workable. All right the first color we're gonna work with is the white and I did go and wash my hands because I had some residue from working with the black soap dough and I don't want any of the black getting on the white. I mean, not too much of it anyway. So the first thing to do is just to grab a piece of the soap dough and roll it in your palms until you make a bowl like this. And then with the rest, you'll make the body doing just the same, rolling it. All right, once you have the two bowls, uh, you're gonna use the bigger one, or it could be the smaller one, but I prefer to use the bigger one to roll it on its side and just make pressure on one side of the bowl. And then you start pinching so that it will start to look like a teardrop, like that. So I'm gently rolling it so that I keep the roundness at the bottom and to keep that tip on the top. Now on the other, the smaller one that is going to be the head, with your pointy tool, you're going to create a, a hole, sort of, and then rotate it in a circular manner so that it looks like this. The idea is that you'll be able to marry them like that. Anytime I make this, it reminds me of a peeled olive. Okay, so once you have that, let's try it for fit. And that seems that it's going to go well together. So I'm going to dip the brush into the water and then just brush it on the inside. And then I'm going to press it in. And then press the two together to help them burn. While this is going on, I'm going to set it apart and start working on the hat. Now I'm going to clean my work surface since I have white in it so that I don't have any of that residue onto the black. Now to do the hat, first I'm just gonna take a, a piece of the soap dome I'm rolling it into a ball and then I'm going to roll it into the surface into a cylinder shape and I want the thickness of it to it will be the thickness of the hat and that seems to be a little too thick so I'm gonna make it thinner okay there we go so once I have a log like this I'm going to cut one end and I'm going to adjust the roundness of it because it does lose the roundness and then the other end I'm also going to cut it a little bit it's a little too long right now and I'm going to pinch it so that I will create a taper end as well. And this taper end is going to go inside the head of the snowman. That will ensure that it, you have a secure and more sturdy addition. So I'm gonna bring my snowman back. And this time I'll do it with a pen. I'm going to insert it and then rotate it and I'm being gentle with this because the snowman head is still being in the process of drying up with the body so I don't want to 
interrupt that. Okay, let's test it. At this point, I can also evaluate if the hat is too tall or not. And in my case, I think it is. So I'm going to... First, I'm going to make this tip a little bit smaller. I'm going to squeeze it in. And I'm going to cut a little bit of the top some more. All right, let me try it again. Okay, that's looking better. So I'm going to use the water. Put it on the inside of the head of the snowman and press the hat in. Okay, I'm gonna set that apart to dry and then I'm gonna work on the rim of the hat. For that, I'm going to roll the rest of the black subto into a longer log. And if you have it, uh, use a cylindrical shape to press lightly onto it. You don't want it to get stuck onto the ceramic, so don't press too hard. Let's see. I'm going to use the blade to scrape it off. And now I'm going to cut a long rectangle out of this with the blade. All right, and this is going to be the rim of the hat like that. To attach it, I'm going to, again, use a tiny bit of water and just brush it around the base of the hat and now I'm just slowly pressing it around when I come to the end I'm going to cut a piece off and then just stretch it out so that they meet and then just pretty much just straighten it out as I see fit so we're halfway on the making of the snowman so I created indentations in the place where the nose and the eyes will be and also I'm going to create an indentation in the place where the mouth will be Okay, so I grab a little piece of black soap dough, just really a smidge of it, like that. I want it to be really small. I'm rolling it just on the tips of my fingers, and then I'm going to add it into one of the indentations I had created. I do have to clean my fingers because I don't want to stain the white part of the subdo and now I'm going to press it in. I found that with eyes it's better if you go smaller. It tends to look more delicate rather than big and sometimes it's not um, proportionate with the face. So I'm going to add my second eye. It's coming off. Now for the mouth, I have a tiny piece of soap dough, and I'm gently rolling it to create the smile. Well, first I create a little snake shape, and once it's like this, I just gently, with the tip of my fingers, bend it over so that it looks like a smile. And now I'm going to put it on the face. This part is a bit tricky. Oh, wait a minute. To ensure a proper addition, I'm going to brush a little bit of water. And then add the smile. 
Okay, now for the carrot, which is going to be the nose, I only need a tiny little piece of orange soap dough. And I'm going to roll it so that it simulates a rice. Then I'm going to insert it on the little indentation we had made for the nose. And then I'm going to press it in with my fingers in this joint like this so that it will have a conical shape. I do not want it to be too long because I don't want it to break easily. And so we're just going to leave it like that. And now I have to work on the scarf. Now this is the color that I chose for the scarf mainly because thread, which was my first thought, tends to bleed. At least the red that I have. I don't know if I color it too much. But you could try it with yours. Okay, after I've rolled a long snake of this, I'm going to measure it. And then I'm going to just brush it lightly with water and add it around his neck. As I do that, I'm pressing onto it to flatten it. And then I'm going to add the end of the scarf by cutting two logs of different sizes and I'm gonna press lightly onto the surface. You constantly have to be cleaning your work area when you're working with soap dough so that it doesn't contaminate, not contaminate, but it doesn't get all over your pieces. That one got black on the one side, so I'm flipping it over and just using the reverse so I use the blade to cut some the end of the scarf and I'm going to add a little bit of water and attach it on the side and just pat it to make sure they stick together the only thing we're missing now is the arms and the buttons so for the arms I just rolled a piece of brown soap dough into a log like this and with the tip of the tool which in my case is a um, chopstick I create a spot where the arm is going to go in okay so I'm going to brush it a little bit with water and press the arm into it you know what before I do that I'm also going to create an indentation in the scarf where the arm is going to be leaning against like that making it thick I'm hoping that will decrease the chances of it breaking and the one on the other side, I'm going to do the same, create an indentation and brush it lightly. And now for the final touch, I'm going to I'm make an indentation where I'm going to put the charcoal buttons. Make sure to visit Rene Cormalis from Soaps for Love to watch a video of her making of cold process soap using these embeds. Thank you. Bye.